Lately, there have been a collection of flurfs that have been making the same identical claims about what Einstein thought about the motion of the Earth around the sun. Einstein himself admitted that the movement of Earth has never been measured. He didn't think it ever could be measured. Even Einstein said there's nothing that they can use to even prove the, move, the movement, the rotation of the Earth. Einstein said you can't detect the Earth's movement from Earth. Einstein saying that nobody can prove that the Earth is orbiting, spinning, or chasing the sun. And here he's him saying no optical experiment can prove that the Earth is moving and it could be geocentric. But could it be true that Einstein actually said this? Well, first, we need to go over a little timeline of events. So in 1887, an experiment was published by Michelson and Morley. It's often just called the Michelson-Morley experiment. In this experiment, they tried to measure the effect of light and its speed as the Earth moved through uh, the ether around the sun in its orbit. Now, at the time, they had a hypothesis that the ether was a medium that light traveled through, similar to how sound travels through air or how, how waves travel over the surface of water. But the experiment did not come out with the result that they had hoped. It showed that maybe there was they were wrong about the ether. Einstein saw this and thought about it and said, well, what if there is no ether and light just does what it does and it has a, a fixed speed that regardless of how fast you're moving through space, light travels the same speed. Well, that changes everything, and a whole bunch of uh, other stuff then happens because of it. Einstein wrote this down and published it in a paper in 1905 called On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies. Today, that is just called special relativity. So then, 10 years later, in 1915, he published four papers and a few others that are generally considered to be the general theory of relativity. Then, a year later, in 1916, Einstein published a mass market book called uh, on Relativity, the Special and General Theory. This is a copy of that book. And in this book, he declares it to be, he describes it as a book for mother-in-law. It's a simplification of, of, um, of the theory of relativity, um, general and special. It's not... Uh, heavy in math, though it does cover some of the math, but you won't find the uh, Einstein's field equations in there. Then in 1922, he, he gave a speech in Japan at Kyoto and uh, titled How I Created the Theory of Relativity. It's kind of similar to this book. He goes over the history of what he thought about in uh, how he came about the, the theory of relativity. And then finally, in 1925, there was an experiment by Michelson and Gale and another guy, Pearson, generally just called Michelson-Gale, where they measured the rotation of the Earth using a similar but not same setup as the first one that I mentioned, the Michelson-Morley experiment. Now, there's a couple important things that you need to, to look at in there. In the 1916 one here, Einstein was talking about the orbit of the Earth around the Sun and specifically gave two different ways that we know that it's possible and we actually know that it happens. One is the aberration of starlight, uh, he called it, uh, but it's we call it parallax. So parallax being when, when you look at the stars, the, the ones that are not as distant, and compare them to the very distant stars, at one point of the year, and then six months later, you look at them again, the foreground stars appear to move slightly in relation to the background stars. You can do this by holding out a finger and opening one eye and then the other, and you can see how your the uh, view of your finger shifts in relation to the background. He also mentioned that the redshift or Doppler shift of the light that we receive from distant stars is is a different amount of shift based on where we are in our orbit. When we're aiming or moving towards them, the shift, the red shift is slightly different than when we're moving away from them. So he gave two very specific ways that we can know that we are moving around the sun. 
Now both of these use light, so you could call them optical. We do them both from the surface of the earth, so you could call them terrestrial. This is very important that he noted this in 1916. Then in 1922, he gave this speech. And one of the, the quotes from earlier, you can see this on the screen now, where they kind of misquoted it. And I don't mean kind of, I mean drastically. First of all, there's no context. And second, they chopped the sentence where there's a comma, put a period and ended the quote. So I will read the full in context uh, quote. Einstein said, while I was thinking of this problem in my student years, I came to know the strange result of Michelson's experiment. That's Michelson Morley in 1887. Soon I came to the conclusion that our idea about the motion of the earth with respect to the ether is incorrect. If we admit Michelson's null results as a fact, this was the first path which led me to the special theory of relativity in 1905. Since then, I have come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment, though the Earth is revolving around the Sun. And if you look at the quote from the Flat Earther, you will see that the part beginning with the comma was converted to a period, and the part that said, though the Earth is revolving around the Sun, was completely omitted. This is a common thing for Flat Earthers. They cherry pick. They take things out of context. To be clear... Einstein is talking about Michelson-Morley uh, type experiments. And this is because, uh, because of special relativity, the understanding that we have from it. It's because using that type of apparatus, the Michelson-Morley apparatus, it cannot measure linear velocity. So let me explain that apparatus. In the apparatus, there's uh, a, a light beam and it's split into two paths one going one direction one going the other direction one goes uh, sideways in relation to earth's orbit around the sun and one goes toward the orbit of the earth around the sun now if you think about sitting on a boat and at the front of the boat you can see the waves moving forward off the front of the boat and they're and they're compressed in relation to the boat they're not moving away from the boat as quickly as the, the, the waves on the side of the boat, and definitely slower than the waves on the back of the boat. That's what they were testing for. They thought that the light traveled through this medium and it would go slower forward, and that they could measure it, measuring linear speed. Now on a boat, you can do a similar thing. You could just drop a prop uh, down into the water and measure how fast it moves. You go faster, it moves faster. You go slower, it moves slower. Turns out, that is not how light works. So Einstein was saying that it's not possible using that type of experiment to measure the movement of the Earth around the Sun. But there are distinctions that are very important here because he was not talking about the daily uh, rotation of the Earth on its axis because Einstein knew, because more than 50 years prior, the Foucault pendulum had measured Earth's daily rotation. So, and there's other ways to do that. Of course, that is on the Earth, so it's terrestrial, but though that one isn't optical. So it's important to keep in mind that Einstein had a distinction between daily rotation on its axis of the Earth and annual orbit of the Earth around the Sun. The Michelson-Morley experiment was specifically trying to measure the difference in, in to light speed as the Earth orbited the Sun. And it's also important to keep the distinction that when he uses the words optical and terrestrial, uh, we're reading that through a translation from German. So that muddies the water a little bit. But very clearly in 1916, he specifically said that there are two ways to measure the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Parallax and the uh, shift in the color of light. So he did definitely give specific things. So in, in the nomenclature of flat earthers, that is him saying he can prove that the Earth orbits the Sun. 
So when he comes back later in 1922 and says, I have come to believe that the motion of Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment, clearly he is not talking about those two specific things. Those are excluded from whatever he means by any optical experiment. And when you look at the context, he is talking about Michelson-Morley type experiments. Now, if you were to say that he was not just speaking about orbit of the Earth around the Sun, but also about the rotation of the Earth, and somehow Einstein was dismissing the Foucault pendulum. He never said that. He never said that the Foucault pendulum didn't do anything, so that you'd have to put words in his mouth. But let's imagine for a second, just take that, take the flat earther's claim. Well, that was 1922. Three years later, in 1925, Michelson and Gale measured the rotation of the Earth using a different type apparatus. No, actually, it's a similar apparatus, but it's a different setup. So, in 19, in 1887, Michelson Morley measured it by splitting light into an L, and then recombining it when it came back to this to to the origin. And then they they saw this the shift because the the light shifted a little bit as as one they were hoping as one had a long a uh, took longer time to to go on its arm. Michelson Gale split it and then went in a giant rectangle, both directions. Now, if the Earth rotates while the light is going around in both directions, then the apparatus shifts and it's a slightly longer path for one of the beams of light and a slightly shorter path for the other beam of light. And again, light travels the same speed. That's what the special theory of relativity says, regardless of, of the medium. So it would take longer to go around the longer path and less time to go around the other path. And that's what they measured in 1925. So if they were to say that Einstein did not think that was possible, then Einstein was just wrong, which is perfectly fine. He was wrong in other instances as well, though nobody has yet found that he was wrong about general or special relativity. People like to say that they think he's wrong, but they never actually show the empirical evidence that supports it. Well, too bad. You, you kind of have to do that. So I think that it's very, very important that we that the flat earthers who make these claims be called out on this because they are blatantly lying. Einstein specifically gave two things that he said, using their, their word, proved the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. Now, they may disagree with it and they may try to debunk it, but that is an, a separate point than him saying that he can prove it. So the specific debunk that they try to do or the, the rejection that they do, that's a different topic. I'll cover in another video. Make sure you subscribe so that you can watch it when I do that. Um, but flat earthers then also, the second part that's really super important is, is they constantly misquote Einstein by leaving off the last part of the sentence and then putting words in his mouth. I'll read it again. He said, comma, though the earth is revolving around the sun. Now that wasn't just him saying that out of blind faith. He gave two specific experiments that measured it. So flat earthers, it's on you to stop lying, but... <laughs> who who would believe that a flat earther would lie, right? We don't just say, gotta lie to flare for no reason. You guys are liars.